to mention what uh, harmful transnational practices exist in Ethiopia, specifically in southern and southwestern uh, part of the country, uh, where uh, laser research and laser outreach is uh, experienced. Uh, some of the harmful transnational practices which has which are having a direct uh, um, impact um, in hindering the economic activity of women are common to almost all part of the, the pastoralist community of Ethiopia, and some are specific to uh, some places. Uh, to mention the major ones, the FGM, uh, female uh, genital mutilation, female weeping for marriage uh, ceremony, uh, which means uh, uh, when uh, when uh, somebody marries, uh, a boy or a man marries, his relatives, relative women, uh, are whipped their uh, bugs, which is uh, followed by uh, infection, and um, you can imagine it. And the other is with widow inheritance. A woman is um, married by her husband's brother or uh, any relative person uh, for uh, not to lose the, the properties or the lands that they own. She has to remain up in, in that house uh, with uh, that home, family, or with <coughs> their children. Early, early marriage, of course. Premarital sex, which uh, brings so many um, uh, effects. Marriage with an old man, depriving property ownership by women. Abortions through abdominal massage, milk tooth extraction, washing only above waist, washing up only above waist, depriving girls' right to education. Um, throwing children if hairs of his upper teeth grows or it comes out first or if, if um, he or she is born before marriage ceremony and so on. So these are all um, harmful practices and they have direct influence, direct impact by uh, making the women submissive either their husbands or their community, and uh, it results in uh, no incentive because if all these things are happening to, to women, they will not have incentive to engage in, in any economic activity. And uh, after all, if she remains in that uh, the same community or the same family after even uh, uh, married, uh, after her husband dies, or if she makes any divorce, she has no right to take her property with her, so there is no purpose, there is no incentive for having, um, um, for doing uh, any business. So uh, I share what uh, uh, Rene said uh, with regards to the, the recommendation, but let me share what we are exactly uh, trying to uh, undertake where we are working in the southern Omo in South um, and West Congo region. We now um, are helping women to fatten goats and sheep. And what we did to secure their property rights, we uh, brought in the group, in the business group, both men and women. 70% of uh, the group are men and 70% of them are women. Why is that? Because if men are involved in the group, uh, her husband or her brother or anybody else uh, would, would, would have a lesser influence to, to snatch, to take over the, the, the goods that she is uh, fattening. So the group is formed in such a way to protect the, the property rights they, are, uh, uh, they can have. And um, as a strategy, what we have to follow and what we have followed is from the right, from the very beginning, we made an advocacy at the district level by having the traditional leaders together, which, have, which are having high 
high level of influence in the community and also the government uh, leaders. We brought them together. We, we discussed thoroughly how we should empower the women, how their girls should be sent, the advantage of the sending the students to the, to the school, and um, giving girls uh, uh, with attendance of skilled uh, uh, professionals, and so on. We have to reach to the level of convincing them, okay? We have to make an agreement. We did that and now things are smoother than before. So by bringing together both men and women, by bringing both um, traditional leaders of the community and the government leaders together, by bringing uh, the women themselves on the table, we, uh, we could reach to the better results. But that doesn't guarantee still. Um, we have to continue on advocating, promoting uh, through time and uh, uh, by checking all the time what's happening, making all the follow-ups. And uh, the other thing we, what we should not forget is to see the other side of the, the coin. Yes, we can engage the women into business, we can um, bring uh, them to the, uh, to the business uh, world, but we have to lift up their burden because they are burdened with house uh, chores, with uh, uh, bringing up their children, with uh, bringing water from farm places. All those activities take longer hours. Okay? The average working hour for a, a woman, for a married, uh, for a, a mother is 50 to 70. Okay? Why is that? Because they, they should uh, grind their uh, grains by manually and they have to carry water from far away. They have to take care of their children, they have to keep them. Then technological remedies are there, technological solutions are there to lift all these burdens up from the women. For example, we uh, could mobilize resources to establish a floor mill where they haven't seen forever any floor mill in that area. Okay, they remained uh, grinding their uh, floors for the family to millets, corn. So they need to have a floor mill. They need to have, if it's possible, to take care uh, centers to keep their children. They need to have. Um, they need their boys, their husbands, to share some of their works which they can uh, be part of. So, continuous discussion should go on. We have to support them uh, uh, in order to lift or in order to liberate them from what they are burdened. Uh, so therefore, there is a hope. There is, uh, and the, the, the other thing is we have to appreciate their potential. We should not, if they are illiterate, if they are um, unable to read and write, it doesn't mean that they, have, they don't have knowledge. They have their uh, local knowledge. They have uh, uh, so many potentials, so we have to build on that potential. We have to consider that. We have to appreciate that. <coughs> And then we have to bring uh, ways of uh, capitalizing all that. I think uh, I said enough. <laughs>